It's been a tough slug for many states throughout the economic recovery, but after 13 straight quarters of revenue growth, things are looking up for state finances. California, which was facing a budget deficit of nearly $60 billion three years ago, posted a surplus for fiscal 2013. In fact, a number of states wrapped up fiscal 2013 with modest surpluses. So have states' finances turned the corner? And what's ahead for state budgets for fiscal 2014, which for most states started July 1? Here to weigh in is one of the top experts in the country on state finances, Don Boyd, Senior Fellow at the Rockefeller Institute of Government. Don, welcome to the program. Thanks so much for joining me. Oh, thanks very much for having me. So states supposed to have posted revenue gains now for over, what, three years. Are they out of the woods? Is the state budget crisis winding down? Uh, no. It, well, the worst declines related to the recession are, are well past them now. That's good news. Uh, if I had to sum it up, though, I would say it's um, out of the frying pan and into the pressure cooker. It's um, uh, not, not back into the fire, but they have lots of challenges ahead. Um, so, yes, tax revenue has been recovering and recovering slowly, but uh, it's actually still below where it was at the start of the recession um, after you adjust for inflation, uh, yet uh, service demand has been increased. Um, states have done a lot of cutting, but, um, you know, they have a long way to go still. Well, let's talk about the outlook for fiscal 2014 because it is July and for many states, the new fiscal year is underway. What is your outlook for tax revenue for the new fiscal year? Well, we think it's going to be slow growth. Uh, last year was propped up a little bit by um, some acceleration of income into 2012 as uh, taxpayers tried to uh, avoid impending increases in federal taxes. That uh, uh, What that did is it uh, led them to accelerate certain kinds of movable income like capital gains into 2012 and because most states with income taxes largely conform to uh, major federal defini definitions of income. It drove up state income taxes as well. So last year was propped up a little bit, and some of that money was undoubtedly taken from this new year. Uh, so that'll slow uh, revenue growth, uh, we think, in the down into the, about the 2.5% uh, range or so, 25 to 3%. Don, what do you think it's going to take to kind of pull revenue back up, you say, on an inflation-adjusted basis, it's not back up to pre-recession levels. Does it really come back to employment levels, and nationally, right, because it's going to differ state to state? Well, we need a whole host of things to, to make it really come back the, the way it was. For one thing, we need to not just employment growth, but income growth. We need um, people willing to spend that income. So we need uh, fears to go away as well. And one of the big things that boosted tax revenue for the states uh, leading up to this crisis was uh, financial markets that were doing extremely well. So sustained increases in stock markets uh, in particular would, would help finances as well. Well, we've certainly seen quite a run since 2009, right? But to your point, if, if revenues are expected to be somewhat weak for fiscal 2014, what does that mean for the spending side? Would you expect spending cuts on the docket for fiscal 2014? Well, I think there, there are certain kinds of spending that states are likely to continue to cut and um, other kinds that are just very, very difficult to cut. So when you look at Medicaid, Medicaid is an entitlement program. Uh, states uh, have some ability to uh, uh, get waivers from the federal government or to change the character of the program itself. But for the most part, when people uh, get onto the Medicaid rolls, uh, the states are going to have to put up the money to pay for it. And uh, states, on average, expect a little bit over 6% growth in enrollment in, in 2014. So we're still dealing with uh, a lot of Medicaid growth. Um, pension contributions, by all rights, states ought to make them. Uh, by that, I mean most pension benefits have pretty strong legal protections. States are going to have to pay sooner or later, and so they ought to pay the contributions. Uh, they certainly find ways to defer and delay making those contributions, but they can't avoid them in the long run unless they have very um, uh, unusual legal decisions that, that benefit them. So those kinds of things are likely to get paid. Retiree health care, um, again, those are, those are costs that um, they'll, they'll have to uh, finance. That leaves less money for um, K-12 education and higher ed. Uh, higher ed in particular has been an area of significant cutting at the state level. Um, so, so I think 
outside of the have to spends like the pensions and Medicaid and the want to spend like K-12 education, most of the areas of the budgets, I, I think we're going to see uh, tepid growth at best. What about the sequester? How is that going to impact state budgets here for fiscal 2014? We've already seen federal funding fall for states. Could this further constrain spending? It will, but its magnitude is not as large uh, as states might have feared. So states receive about $600 billion a year in grants from the federal government. It's a significant chunk, chunk of the federal budget. It's a very big chunk of state budgets. On average, about 32% of state revenue. So, so federal grants are a big area of concern for states. Uh, as far as the sequester itself is concerned, they dodged a bullet. The biggest grant is um, Medicaid, uh, 40 to 43% of um, of total grants, and that's exempt uh, from uh, sequester, as are some of the other large grants. So the total impact is likely to be about $5 billion. It's not pocket change, but in the scheme of really big risks to states, this is not one of them. Yeah, speaking of risks, you did mention pension, pension funds earlier in the interview. I mean, is that the 800-pound gorilla as far as threats are concerned for state budgets going forward? It is the big long-term threat. There are, um, you know, if you talk to the governors, they will tell you that Medicaid is their number one immediate concern, and it's the um, the seemingly inexorable growth of Medicaid and the fact that they have to pay it year after year. So in the short term, Medicaid is the, the number one risk. But over the long term, unquestionably, it's pensions. They are properly valued. Uh, two to three trillion dollars worth of unfunded liabilities. Uh, the reported values are closer to a trillion, even that's large. Um, and contributions will have to rise to pay for them. And because they have such strong legal protections, they're very hard to get out from under. So it is the big risk if there were bad performance in the stock markets for one or two or three years, it would really accelerate. Don, do you think there's a real risk of certain pension funds going broke in the coming years? Well, there are there are some pension funds that are in, in very deep trouble. By and large, the uh, funds in Illinois, on average, are about 35% funded. That's a level that really can't be um, recovered from. Uh, there's no investment return scenario that's going to uh, get them to recover. Um, meanwhile, um, some of the... Uh, uh, um, City pension funds are also uh, in, in considerable uh, distress. Chicago is, is probably top of the list again. So there are significant risks. They're not going to run out of money in a year, but if you take a handful of years, we're, we're looking at trouble. On the local municipality side, as average home prices have risen nationally and in many cases, property tax rates have increased our municipalities in better shape. Well, one of the things this recession has proved is that if um, if your purpose for having taxes is to finance government, the property tax is a really good tax to have. Even when you have a housing bust in most parts of the country, it didn't get hit as hard as income taxes and sales taxes. That doesn't mean it wasn't it wasn't hit. It certainly has declined somewhat lately, and uh, in some parts of the country, particularly California, it declined uh, very sharply. I would say now, though, most of the declines seem to be past us for the nation as a whole. The property tax. Uh, is now beginning to grow slightly. So that's a, that's good news for municipal budgets. All right. Well, on that happy note, we'll have to leave things there. Thanks so much for coming on the program and sharing your insights. So appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Don Boyd, Senior Fellow at the Rockefeller Institute of Government.